it's a final. John was saying uh, the Houston yeah. Rockets uh, has a team of lawyers in, <laughs> in addition to being very good basketball players. Yes, they do tend to argue most every call made by the referees. Uh, the Bucks had some complaints as well. The thing is, uh, neither side got, they just, they don't, they never change the call. It's like the refs are that stubborn. Like, this is what we called. We're not going to change it. No. Anyway, uh, so you yeah, have the Bucks and the Rockets tonight. Bucks had a chance to become the number one seed overall in the East. Figure that's going to happen, but this would officially made it happen. Bucks up one. Giannis, baseline MVP quality right there with the spin move. 6.30 to go. The Rockets are down five. James Harden, because he's just going to go down and shoot threes or get fouled. That's his game. Rockets trail by two. He'll get layups as well. Giannis driving through everybody. A little contact. Nothing called. This that time, he's just too strong. It's like a gazelle. Goes through there. Antelope, a new. 3.15 to go. Bucks trying to pull away up five. Lopez over to Chris Middleton for three. So the Bucks up eight. 112-104 with three minutes to go. They are in a good spot. George Hill turning it over. And that's how you get to a poorer spot. By the way, Robert Covington finishes the bucket in transition. It's a one-point game. Giannis then turns it over. Harden. Westbrook Harden finishing by Brody. Brooke Lopez in the lane. That's just a, like a scud that he throws in there, but he gets the, <laughs> gets the members bounce, and it goes down. Bucks have the lead again. A couple of free throws Whoa. by Houston. They're up one. Here come the Bucks again because Giannis does Giannis things. Other way, this time, Westbrook, so athletic, just attacks the rim right there. Westbrook, they, they, they argued they really, really, really wanted goaltending. They got nothing. Free throws are good, so the Rockets up one. 20 to go. Giannis drives. Got Corver in the corner, and no. House is there to make the defensive play. Corver then wraps him up, so that's a foul. Couple of free throws. Give them credit, man. The Rockets made their free throws when they needed to. Chris Middleton to tie. No, can't get it to go. And the Rockets are going to win it 120 to 116. They come back again late to win it for the Bucks. It's a bit unfathomable. They were 214 and 2 hmm. entering tonight when leading by eight points or more with three minutes or fewer left in a game. That goes back to 2013. So, uh, don't expect that to happen. That's that's under Giannis. When they've had Giannis 214 and 2, the Rockets meanwhile pull off a comeback after overcoming a seven-point deficit with 45 seconds left Friday against the Mavericks. NBA basketball is played in a bubble. It is analyzed from Tim Legler's house. Legs studying up in his study. <laughs> Uh, Bucks, Rockets, legs. I look at that, and my explanation for the Rockets is clearly the last two games. It is clean living and church twice a week. Is is there a more basketball-y <laughs> explanation for what's going on? Yeah, listen, man, this team is just impossible to prepare to defend on short notice. I mean, even in a regular season, a normal regular season, it's so difficult to prepare for their pace, the number of threes they shoot, to have those two dynamic guards. And I think the pace really, to me, is the biggest difference, and, and Russell Westbrook is the guy that I think, this is going to say a lot right now, this is a guy that's been an MVP and averaged triple-double three different times. I think this is the best offensive year of Russell Westbrook's career, um, and this is what he's doing to people right now, the relentlessness, the speed with which he attacks. This is off an offensive rebound, but he just puts his head down, draws three guys, and the recipient's going to be Daniel House in the corner for a wide-open shot, all created by Russell Westbrook's speed. Another example here, I like this one even better, because look at where Russell Westbrook gets this basketball in the backcourt. He's 90 feet from the other end of the floor. When he gets to half court, he can see there's no balance defensively. That's when he turns the Jets on and, again, pinches two guys into the edge of the lane, kick out, wide open shot for P.J. Tucker. He elects to make the extra pass, and Covington walks into a three. Russell Westbrook, to me, this year the difference is he's not taking that three-point shot that you're daring him to take. He's getting the shot he wants. He's making that mid-range jumper again. And then this pace he has brought to the Rockets' offense is something they have never had since James Harden got there. This is why they're so dangerous, and that's why even for a team like Milwaukee, he's one of the best defensive teams in the league, they did not have an answer tonight in mm -hmm. order to stop the Rockets. So the Bucs are still going to come out of there with the number one seed in the East, but the Celtics, a legitimate contender also in that conference. Um, they added more drama than was necessary in their game against the Blazers. Let's talk Jason Tatum. Uh, whatever regression he had last year, he has made the steps forward this year. That's a great point, John. You hit it right on the head. The, the bottom line is at the start of the year, the Celtics, when you looked at their two forwards, they had a really nice young player, two really nice young players in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Right now, 
They've got a superstar and then a future all-star. That's where these guys have evolved, and you saw it in Tatum before the league shut down. He was the, he was the hottest player in the NBA before the league uh, went on hiatus, and he has picked up where he left off. He did not shoot very well in the first game, but, man, did he answer. And this shows you the confidence level he has now, and this ability to get that, that mid-range shot, take the ball anywhere on the floor. That's what superstars do in this league, even making plays uh, for, for his partner, Jalen Brown, who is also a guy who's exponentially improved from a year ago. I don't know what it was last year, the, the locker room, the toxicity, what it was. Those guys weren't very happy, but they're certainly happy this year. And as a result, uh, they're making plays. And this is really a head scratch for the end of this game. I don't understand how you can take this layup inside of four seconds when you don't have a timeout to cut it to one. I think Damian Lillard gave up on that play. He not necessarily shoot it right there, but you've got plenty of time to call somebody over for a ball screen, try to create something. Gary Trent was red hot at the time, too. He was on the wing. Instead, they take that quick layup, and I think it was really just a situation where they blanked out mentally because then they did not have an opportunity with no timeouts to get that basketball up the floor and have an opportunity to tie the game. I think they regret it looking at it now. End of that game was kind of strange for Portland. Big win for the Celtics in that one. Tim Legler, we love the world map, but the magic bird picture makes the room. Thanks, <laughs> brother. So the Rockets take down the Bucks. We're not done talking about it. No. You'll hear from every player. They'll be coming to the podium. Well, the Prince Bush finishes last for the first time since 2016. 82 to go. Brad Keselowski going after Denny Hamlin. And he got him. And then he's just standing on it the rest of the way. Final lap. Keselowski into the lead comfortably. Hamlin giving chase, but well back. Keselowski wins the race. Hamlin. Runs second. True X Jr. ends up in third and good little donuts when it was all over. The coronavirus outbreak on the St. Louis Cardinals team forced the cancellation of their series this weekend with the Brewers. The plan as of now is for the Cards to resume play at Detroit on Tuesday, even as the count of players and staff infected by the virus is feared to be growing. More testing took place Sunday. The results won't be known until Monday. For a time Sunday, Jonas Cespedes was a missing person. He's been found, but won't be again with the Mets this season. The Mets put out a statement as their game in Atlanta began, saying he had not arrived and efforts to contact him were unsuccessful. Then during the loss to the Braves, the agent for Cespedes contacted the Mets to announce his client was dropping out for COVID-related reasons. He was not deemed to have a pre-existing condition, so he forfeits his salary. Here's the take from the Mets. First and foremost... Uh, I'm glad to say and to hear that he is he's healthy and he's safe. Uh, and we we learned during the game today, late in the game, that uh, that he's decided to opt out of the remainder of the season for COVID related related reasons. Um, when we showed up to the ballpark this morning, uh, he was not here. He was not on site. We weren't uh, we weren't aware of why. Uh, we were able to uh, send a security team to the to the hotel um, and then ultimately learned later that he was that he was healthy, he was not in any danger, and then ultimately has made the decision to to opt out of the season. So Cespedes has joined a lengthy list of players to opt out. Lorenzo Cain announced Saturday he wouldn't finish the season. Among the notable names to opt out, most did so before the season even started. Cespedes, however, uh, played in eight games, was just batting 161. Uh, now to the Mets and Braves and the players who opted to participate in the ball game. Atlanta on top in the East. David Peterson down to nothing in this one. He throws that one to Johan Carmargo. Figures that's just a long fly ball. And then Dom Smith, look out for that um, wall. Peterson seems incredulous, and Smith seems to not know what a warning track is. Bang! Smith at least good good humor and well padded. Yeah, you got me. I didn't realize that. And then top seven, Pete Alonzo entering Sunday, hitting 200. He believes in the alien. On base percentage, 333. Slugging percentage, below 300. And all those numbers are going to look worse as he looks at a, fat, a fastball, and then he just, he's just doing wow. damage right there. What, what does the KO says? You don't blame the tools? A good yeah. craftsman right there, Alonzo. Here again, yeah. Hit out of the strike zone. Other way, Ronald Cunha Jr.'s got that one. Alonzo, the collar, 0 for 5, 3 Ks, and the Mets lose 4-zip.
Update, update. What are we updating? Mavericks, Suns, third Luka. quarter. Maz down two, Luka Doncic. Two steps for Zingas, little pick and roll, that's fun. For Zingas, he's tall. Nice lob. And when we said Luka disappointed us, we just meant he didn't have his game that we're typically used to last time. Under three to go. Cameron Payne Ooh. driving. Porzingis resists. Mavs go the other way. Right. Oh, nice little finish. Tied at 90. Payne. No one wants him. He'll just launch that. Sun's out by three. And then Payne. Give it to me again. Update score. What do we got for a score? 